J-E-L-L-O. The Jell-O program coming to you from Hollywood, California, starring Jack Benny, with Barry Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens a program with Way Down Upon the Los Angeles River. <laughs> A delight to the eye, that's Jell-O. And a treat to the taste, that's Jell-O, too. The most attractive dessert you've ever seen. The most luscious dessert you've ever enjoyed. Jell-O's rich, glowing colors make your mouth water just to look at them. And when it comes to flavor, Jell-O is simply unrivaled. In its grand flavor, you enjoy a rich refreshment that reminds you of juicy, ripe fruits fresh from tree or vine. And no other dessert, we believe, can give you such swell, tantalizing goodness or offer you more downright pleasure. So order several packages of Jell-O from your grocer, choosing any or all of Jell-O's six delicious flavors, strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, or lime. Incidentally, strawberry, raspberry, and cherry Jell-O are now better than ever. Each has a new improved flavor obtained by using a natural flavor base artificially enhanced. And the result is a dessert of sheer delight. Treat the family to a rich shimmering mold of Jell-O tomorrow. upon the Los Angeles River played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, spring has come to Southern California. Birds are twittering in the treetops. Buds are bursting on the branches. All nature is in tune. Yeah, twittering. <laughs> Dennis, go ahead, Don. So without further ado, we would like to show you how a typical gentleman farmer is heralding the arrival of spring. The time early this afternoon. The scene, Jack Benny's backyard. The farmer... Jack Benny. <laughs> Rochester. Rochester, hand me those tomato plants. I'll set them out next to the string beans here. Why don't you plant these seeds instead? I don't want those. I want tomatoes. But these are mighty appetizing when they reach maturity. Rochester, we've planted enough watermelons. <laughs> That's all you think of, watermelons. We planted more now than we can eat. Then who can eat? Than I can eat. <laughs> now, please remember, this is my garden. There. That's in deep enough. <laughs> you sure look funny in those overalls and that old straw hat. I do look like a farmer in this outfit, don't I? All but the rubber gloves. They're too clinical. <laughs> Well, I've got soft, lovely hands, and I'm going to keep them that way. <laughs> Rochester, uh, go get the hose. I want to water the soil around these plants. I meant to tell you about that. Remember when Mr. Billsley came home the other night after he'd been out celebrating? Uh-huh. Well, he thought the hose was a snake and shot it full of holes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That was a brand new hose. Well, go get it anyway. We can patch it up. Too late now, boss. He mailed it to Frank Buck. <laughs> What? He wants to know what species it is. That's the silliest thing Mr. Billingsley has ever done. You know, I think I've got some of these plants upside down. No, I guess they're all right. Dennis, don't mow so close to the rose bushes. Watch it. I'm almost through, Mr. Benny. Well, keep at it. Now, Dennis, while I think of it, I want you to go over to Claudette Colbert's house first thing in the morning and mow the lawn there. She'll be expecting you. Claudette Colbert? Gosh! And you'll get 35 cents an hour. But gee, Mr. Benny, I'm nuts about her. I couldn't charge her anything. You'll charge the regular rate. <laughs> I'm your agent, and I set the deal. <laughs> so don't worry about it. Okay. Now, let's see. Hey, Rochester, look, uh, look at these mushrooms here. I don't remember planting any mushrooms. Those are toadstools, boss. They're poison. No, no, Rochester, I think they're mushrooms. Go ahead and taste one. I wouldn't eat one of those if you shoved a steak under it. <laughs> oh, 
what a baby. You know, Rochester, there's an old saying, a coward dies a thousand deaths. A hero dies but one. Yeah, but supposing I eat that thing and find out I'm a hero. <laughs> All right, don't eat it. Who cares? Oh, hello, Rochester. The garden looks lovely. Thanks, Miss Livingston. I see you got the scarecrow up already. This is me, and you know it. <laughs> you buy that package of cucumber seeds like I asked you to? Yes, here you are. They were 10 cents. Thanks. Gee, just think, Mary. I'm going to take these little seeds, plant them in the ground, and before you know it, vines will spring up with oodles and oodles of cucumbers on them. Isn't nature wonderful? Yeah. And Mary, half of those cucumbers are going to be yours. The heck with nature. Give me my dime. <laughs> Give me my dime. Give me my dime. I'll be sorry when the crop comes in. I feel it's going to be a big season. Oh, you're some farmer. You and your crazy experiments. Oh, they're not so crazy. Remember last year? You sprinkled cheese all over the ground and tried to raise all rotten potatoes. <laughs> Sure, I sprinkled cheese. I had an idea. <laughs> oh, what are you giggling about? Every other gardener around here had trouble with potato bugs, but you had mice. <laughs> All right. I still say it doesn't hurt to experiment. In California, is just a place to do it. You know, Mary... I, I only have a little more to go, Mr. Benny. Okay. You know, Mary, I wouldn't laugh if I were you. I might turn out to be another Luther Burbank. Who? Burbank. Luther Burbank. Oh, yeah, they named Glendale after him. They named Burbank after him. <laughs> Burbank, not Glendale. Oh, I guess I didn't analyze it. You certainly didn't. Say, Mary. Hello, Miss Livingston. What's new? Haven't you heard? I just missed being the cucumber queen. Oh, Mary. Well, see you later. Ding, ding. He always plays conductor when he mows the lawn. <laughs> what a kid. You know, Mary, every year when spring comes around, I, I wish I was a kid again. Of course, I'm still full of pep. I feel young. Oh, stop rolling your eyes. I'm not rolling my eyes. I save that little trick for pictures. Now, let's see. Oh, Mary, I was just having a little argument with Rochester. Look. Look down there. Are those things, is there mushrooms or toadstools? Those are toadstools. They are? Well, I'm certainly glad you told me. I, I almost ate one. You almost ate one? <laughs> well, I mean, I would have eaten one after you did. With me laying there? <laughs> All right, forget it. I better dig these up and throw them away. Shoo, shoo! Darn those chickens! Get out of here! Go! Go, go! Whose chickens are they, Jack? What? Whose chickens are they? Oh, Ronald Coleman's. They're always flying over the fence. Chase them back, Rochester. All of them? Yes. <laughs> yes, all of them. They're young and tender, boss. I don't care. They're ruining my garden. Now chase those chickens back to Mr. Coleman's yard. Every single one of them. But, boss, you're stifling my personality. <laughs> chase them away. Okay. Shoo, shoo. <laughs> Dog, gone. How can I have so much willpower when I'm drooling? You know, Mr. Uh, you know, Mary, Mr. Coleman and I are very good friends. And I want us to stay that way. Well, I better get these cucumber seeds in. Hey, Jack, here comes one of your writers. Oh, yes, it's about time. We go on the air pretty soon. I haven't even seen the script yet. Well, so you finally got here. Here's the script, Jack, if I do say so myself. <laughs> Thanks. Where's your partner? Bill went to Catalina. Your Bill! <laughs> Eddie must have gone to Catalina. Well, one of us did. <laughs> Now, let's see, uh, let's see what you two guys wrote here. Hello, Mary. Hello, Happy. <laughs> I hope it's a play or something. They are... Hey, wait a minute. This is Tobacco Road. We did that last week. This time, we're doing it with jokes. <laughs> what? And if they don't laugh tonight, we'll do it again next week. 
Oh, oh don't be so stubborn. <laughs> Now, look, you run ahead to the studio, and you better have something else written before we get there. Okay, chum. I have more trouble with those guys. Well, it's your own fault, Jack. Why don't you fire them? Oh, I can't. You know how soft-hearted I am, and besides, they saw me once at Laguna Beach with a... Well, anyway, they're... <laughs> they're... <laughs> anyway, they're just a little tired now, and you... Hey, Dennis, we'll be leaving for the studio pretty soon. What are you going to sing on the program? I got a swell number called High on a Windy Hill. Well, go in the house and run over it on the piano. I want to hear it. Okay. Shall I take Mr. Coleman's lawnmower back to him? Never mind. I think he bought another one. <laughs> now, Mary, uh, hand me that trowel. <laughs> hey, Jack. Jack, look what Rochester's got. Well, I'll be darned. Oh, Rochester! Yes, boy! <laughs> what have you got in your arm? All we need is dumplings! Put down that chicken! <laughs> I'm warning you for the last time, chase those hands over the fence. Mary, hand me that trowel. song was all right, wasn't it, Mary? That should be swell on the show tonight. Uh-huh. I hope I'm planting these cucumbers in the right place. It might be a little too shady for them. Say, Jack, look at that cute little robin over there. He just flew in from Miami Beach. How do you know? He's got a towel from the Roney Plaza. Oh, cut that out. Save that stuff for the program. Say, Rochester, get the car. We'll be leaving for the studio in a few minutes. Yes, sir. Do you want the town car or the deluxe convertible coupe? <laughs> What are you talking about? It's spring. I'm dreaming. <laughs> Stay in the clouds if you want to, but get the Maxwell. Okay. Well, it's beginning to shape up pretty good. I got cucumbers, tomatoes, string beans. Aren't you going to plant beets this year? No, Rochester makes terrible borscht. <laughs> Anything he can't barbecue, he doesn't put his heart into. <laughs> well, let's go. Uh-oh, here comes your border. Oh, yes. I wonder why he's wearing that turban. 
Uh, hello, Mr. Billingsley. Good afternoon, Mr. Benny. Digging in your garden, I see. <laughs> yes, yes, I uh, thought I'd get started early this year. I, uh, I do hope you plant pistachios. They're delightful. But, Mr. Billingsley, <laughs> pistachios are nuts. Well, who isn't? <laughs> Oh, I didn't... <laughs> I didn't look at it quite that way. Hmm. Well, goodbye, Mr. Benny. I'm going out for a little stroll. Goodbye. Oh, by the way, Mr. Billingsley, you... <laughs> you look just like a Hindu. Is that a turban wound around your head? No, that's a bed sheet. I slept like a top last night. <laughs> oh. Well, we've, uh... We've got to uh, run along to the studio. See you later, Mr. Billingsley. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, thanks. I never touch it. <laughs> I wish I could figure him out. Huh? Oh, well. Come on, ready for Oh, Dennis, come on. We're leaving for the studio. Be right with you, Mr. Benny. No, it's such a nice day, Rochester. You might have put the top down. It'll go down as soon as we hit a dip. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I got one of those new automatic tops, Mary. Oh, shut up. <laughs> well, what's the matter with you? Relax, kids. Spring is here. Enjoy it like I do. You ought to enjoy it. That's when you stop aching. <laughs> I don't ache in the winter, either. Come on, get in the car, kid. The three of us will sit in the back. Now, before you get in, Dennis, I want you to sign this release. Here, sign on the dotted line. Okay. What release? It's just a formality. Dennis bumped his head in my car the other day, and he's suing me. <laughs> suing you? All I want is 10 cents for that bottle of iodine. Isn't that silly? Why don't you set a lot of court? Give him half of your cucumbers. <laughs> he won't get anything. I don't like his attitude. Now, get in the car. Get going, Rochester. We haven't much time. Gosh, I don't know what to do on the program tonight. Dennis, would you like to sing the next... Rochester, watch that bump as you go out the driveway. <laughs> Whoops! Where's Dennis? Never mind him. Get off my shoulders. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Drive on, Rochester. <laughs> Uh, let us off there at the studio entrance. Uh, let's stop here at the drugstore, Jack. I want a sandwich. Sure, we got plenty of time. Okay. Stop here, Rochester. Yes, sir. <laughs> I gotta have those brakes fixed. <laughs> Park the car, Rochester. I'll see you after the broadcast. I was thinking on going down to Central Avenue and taking my girlfriend out for a drive. Okay, but be back in time to pick me up. Yes, sir. So long, boss. <laughs> hmm. 
Rochester. Did you hear that? Gesundheit, boss. Nobody sneezed. <laughs> Rochester, what have you got under that front seat? Which seat? The front seat. Well, doggone if it ain't supper. That's one of Mr. Coleman's chickens. Now, how did that hen get in my car? I know and she knows, but we ain't talking. <laughs> You don't have to talk. Now, hand me that hand, and I'll see that Mr. Coleman gets it back. Okay, here you are. See you later. Now, hold still, Chickie. Nothing to be afraid of. Huh? Well, that tops everything. You certainly look silly walking into a drugstore with a chicken in your arm. When I get the studio, I'll put it in a box. Gee, it's crowded in here, isn't it? One tuna fish on whole wheat. One tuna coming up. Hello, Marvin. Hello, Mr. Benny. Where'd you get the chicken? It's not mine, it's Ronald Coleman's. Well, that's funny, I've never seen him carry it around. <laughs> Believe me, it's his chicken. Now, give me a chocolate malted milk, will you? Okay. One chocolate malted milk, one malted with an egg in it. Wait a minute. I don't want an egg in it. Have you looked in the mirror lately? <laughs> Listen, all I want is a plain malted milk. See, uh, I think I'll have the special here. Chop suey and all the tea you can drink, 15 cents. Tea, you can get anything at a drugstore now, can't you? Bring her the chop suey, Mervyn. Okay. Hey, Laverne. Ping, chong, kung, ping, song. Ma, ka, ka, la, ti, yu, ka, Coming up. Hey, those boys certainly get in the mood for things, don't they? Huh? You said it. Last Sunday, I ordered Swiss steak, and they put a watch in it. Oh, they think they're so smart. What do you want, Dennis? I think I'll have the special sandwich, peanut brittle on whole wheat. You mean, you mean peanut butter? No, look, it says right here, peanut brittle. Oh, that's a misprint, kid. I'll bring you a peanut butter sandwich. Nothing doing. It says peanut brittle here, and that's what I want. Now, listen. I know my rights. Dennis! <laughs> Bring, uh, bring him a glass of milk and a piece of apple pie. Okay. It better have peanuts in it. <laughs> I'm gonna knock you right off that stool, kid. Now behave yourself. Here's your chop suey, Mary. Well, what about it, Mervyn? Where's my malted milk? Now, don't get huffy or I'll put a Mickey in it. <laughs> what? One Mickey coming up! <laughs> Isn't that awful? Why do I come in here? Why? You want a meal ticket on a punch board. That's all used up. Come on, fellas, give me a little service, will you? Oh, hiya, Don. Oh, hello, Jack. Say, what in the world are you doing with that chicken? Belongs to Ronald Coleman. Sit down and have a sandwich, Don. Oh, I just finished, thanks. I've got to run back to the studio and go over my commercial. Oh. What do you think of this idea, Jack? Now, in the middle of the program, uh, you get into an argument with me and say, now, listen, bud. Uh, listen, bud? Yes, then I'll say, speaking of buds, ladies and gentlemen, spring is here. So why don't you run down to your neighborhood grocer and blossom jello? Blossom jello? <laughs> yes, it sounds like buy some jello. Oh, they oh. scream at that. Oh, oh, blossom, eh? I see. Don, just do a straight commercial and it'll be much better. But, Jack, I think we ought to do one that'll get a laugh. So do I, but this ain't it, brother, <laughs> believe me. Now, now, frame something that isn't so complicated. Here's your malted milk, Mr. Benny. It's about time. Hey, Jack, look who just came in. Where? Isn't that the fat girl who was on our program last week? Oh, yes, Heather Noodleman. <laughs> Hello, Miss Noodleman. What's new, kid? <laughs> oh, nothing much. What are you doing around here? I just stopped in for a late breakfast. Oh, well, what do you have, miss? A leg of lamb and a cup of coffee. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. No cream in the coffee. <laughs> A lot that'll help. Yeah. Man. Well, I'm going now, Jack. See you at the studio. Okay, Don. Oh, say, Jack, my new picture, The Roundup's playing at the Paramount this week. Would you mind mentioning it on the program? Oh, no, no, I'll be glad to. Maybe you can tie it in with spring. Yeah, okay, bud. See you upstairs, Don. Hey, you, where's that leg of lamb? Take it easy, Miss Noodleman. You can't be starving. Gee. How's your malted milk, Mr. Benny? Very good, Dennis.
What was, what was that? Hey, Jack, look. Well, I'll be darned. Hmm. Hey, Mervyn, put this egg in my malter. <laughs> Here. I thought you didn't want an egg. Mary, this is destiny. <laughs> Leave me alone. Oh, hello, Phil. Hiya, Jackson. Boy, am I low. Feeling bad, eh? Yeah. Same thing, Mervyn. Hey, Laverne, pull Harris together. One bromo coming up. <laughs> they sure know you, Phil. A bromo for lunch. You know, if you keep this up... Holy smoke, hurry up, Mervyn. I see a chicken on the counter. <laughs> It's a real one. Calm down. Say, Phil, we only got a few minutes here. What numbers are you playing on the program tonight? I don't know. How do I know? Well, don't get mad. I just asked. So. Didn't you rehearse anything? What are you worried about? Everything we play sounds the same, don't it? I know. Now, here's your malted milk with an egg in it. That'll be 20 cents. 15 cents. My chicken laid the egg. That's Ronald Coleman's chicken. All right. I'll give the nickel to him. Now, look, Bud. Hey, you, where's my leg of lamb? And all I'm paying is 15 cents. Jack, Jack, look what time it is. Oh, my ah, goodness, we're on ah, the air in a minute. Come on, Dennis, Phil. Ah, Phil, ah, hurry up. Oh, hey, look, Tommy. Ah. Okay, Don, we're on the air. The Jell-O program, coming to you from Hollywood, California, starring Jack Benny, with Barry Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens the program. During the seven years this program has been on the air, ladies and gentlemen, I've broadcast hundreds and hundreds of grand Jell-O recipes. Many of you, I know from your letters, have wished that you might have these recipes in printed form so that you can refer to them whenever you want to. And now we've made this possible. Now you can have these very same radio recipes as we gave them to you on this program gathered together in one of the handiest and most beautiful books you ever saw. You'll find the best of these favorite Jell-O recipes all ready and waiting for you in our big new 48-page dessert recipe book, a lovely picture-filled book that you'll be proud to add to your kitchen library. But wait, that's not all. In addition to these clever Jell-O recipes, this handsome book contains hundreds of recipes for all kinds of other tempting desserts, pastries, puddings, cakes, and cookies. In fact, there are 365 different dessert recipes and suggestions, a brand new dessert for every day in the year. The charming way this beautiful book is illustrated with page after page of bright colored paintings and photographs, well, you simply have to see it to believe it. So send for your copy right away. Just mail 10 cents in coin or stamps to Don Wilson, care of General Foods, Battle Creek, Michigan. Do it tonight. Remember, all you do is send in 10 cents in coin or stamps. And the address again is Don Wilson, care of General Foods, Battle Creek, Michigan. <laughs> This is the last number of the 26th program in the current Jell-O series, and we will be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. Say, Jack, when are you leaving for Chicago? Tomorrow night, Mary. Hey, what's this about Chicago? I'm going to, uh, Phil, I'm going to appear at a benefit there Wednesday evening for the Greek War Relief at the Civic Opera House. So I'll see you all next Sunday, fellas. And incidentally, I'm going to bring the quiz kids back with me from Chicago. They're going to be on our program next Sunday. Boy, am I going to show them up. Hey, where's my leg of lamb? <laughs> What a voice, all the way from the drugstore. <laughs> Good night, folks. Listen here, folks, and I mean all you men and women who love coffee, but are kept awake by the caffeine in ordinary coffee. Why don't you try drinking Sanka coffee and see if you don't sleep better? Sanka coffee has had 97% of the caffeine removed. What's more, Sanka is real coffee. Rich, mellow, full-bodied. So start drinking Sanka coffee tomorrow, won't you? Sanka coffee presents We the People over another network every Tuesday night. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>